half past the hour, welcoming you back. Um, it's time for our, our second speaker, or kind of our third speaker, actually. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Toby Hudson, who's based in Sydney. And Toby will introduce himself a bit more and take you through Entity Explosion. All right. Thanks very much, Siobhan. Uh, so welcome. Thank you for coming along. Uh, my name is Toby Hudson, um, and I'm kind of an outsider to this community, but I'll, I'll tell you how I ended up here. Um, my normal day job is um, I'm a chemistry teacher and researcher at the University of Sydney. Um, I've for a long time been associated with Wikimedia projects, uh, including and focusing especially on Wikidata. Um, that uh, led me to a project in, in lockdown uh, during the early part of the year uh, to, to write a, a little bit of a web application. So that's this thing, Entity Explosion, which I'll be talking about. But, um, but I guess uh, what I, yes, yeah, so, that's, so that's my path into this world of identifiers and uh, even persistent identifiers. I'll, I'll speak about that. And I guess I'll speak a little bit about Wikidata on the way because that's how I got there. Uh, this um, picture down here is, is my university's prettiest building, uh, the one that Chinese uh, tourists come to visit and um, their tour guides tell them it is Harry Potter's uh, building, but um, it's not, it's in Australia. Um, this one here is uh, all of you, uh, the, the all of us, the, the uh, ugly but beautiful community that comes together when people um, pitch in their own little bits. Uh, so this is the coral reef uh, in um, on the barrier reef of Australia. Um, I, so that Im image I put up all the time because I, I really do think it represents um, how my uh, how I conceive of Wikimedia projects and and especially communities that um, build upon one another's work. And I want to make sure that I, I acknowledge that I'm building upon thousands and thousands of other people's work here today. Uh, so uh, to, to, sorry, no, I didn't mean to click that. I just meant to, to um, yeah, to continue um, uh, connecting, I, every time I'm giving talks that international people are listening to nowadays, I'm putting up this slide, uh, again, to, to make sure we, we remember our interconnectedness uh, obviously, uh, my our heart reaches out to those of you who are dealing with COVID uh, really badly at the moment in Australia. We're currently um, still in the the eye of the storm. We we have it has not hit us um, except for some brief outbreaks. So there is hope, uh, and um, thank you for those of you who are doing things online virtually um, to to avoid transmitting this crazy virus. Um, let me, yes, let me keep going then. Um, so this is the objective of the app. I'm going to explain um, how we do this in, in a minute, but um, but the idea is, and, and so this idea can be communicated to any web user um, with no knowledge of identifiers or PIDs or Wikidata or anything. Um, while reading a website, right, any website, while reading a website, wouldn't you like to discover links and information about that same topic on other sites. So you might want to be able to go to other sites about that same topic. How do we do that? Of course, you can go back out of your page into Google, try and search alternative sites for that topic. Wouldn't it be nice to specifically use the concept of the page that you're on and link directly off to other places about that exact same concept? Not just have a similar string in the name, but that exact concept. And so the idea here is um, to, to use this, this browser tool, this browser extension. Uh, so if you do want to test it out um, uh, or find out more about it, if you go to this page, it'll show you where to go. Um, the downloads are for Chrome or Firefox at the moment. We're expecting to be able to roll out more browsers later because it seems like it's all portable. But um, I'm, I'm not a real web programmer. I, as I said, it was just my project from um, lockdown. And then I was told that I should present at this conference. So here we go. So how do we do this? How do we connect to? Uh, thanks for putting that in the in the chat. There you go. 
Um, so here's what I'll, I'll talk about briefly today. I'll, I'll talk about um, Wikidata, just to introduce you, those of you who are not familiar. Uh, it's sort of, and Simon Cobb, I think, will be presenting later, it's sort of a massive PID community. We have a persistent identifier, one persistent identifier for any kind of thing. So it's called a QID. It's, um, it could describe research works. It could describe people. It could describe sports or stars or paintings. And so it's the idea is to, class, uh, to, to, I guess, associate a number with any kind of concept. And then once you've got that, then we can um, match up that concept with any identifiers that are, are used for that concept across the web or, or beyond. Uh, similarly, any names in any languages for that concept. And so we collect hundreds of millions of these concepts and try to document them all with all of their identifiers and all of their languages. Obviously, that's a huge task and, and there's lots of people involved. It's, it's also contributed to by uh, robots. So you're welcome to write programs to contribute your data. And so we end up getting up to quite large sizes already, although not comprehensive in any sense. Um, I'll, I'll talk about entity explosion itself. Uh, and then if any of you are interested in integrating your data, your identifiers with Wikidata, I might get time to speak about how, how you can do that. So yes, Wikidata, this is my, not my phrase, but um, it, Wikidata has been called the Rosetta Stone of the internet. Remember the Rosetta Stone was a, uh, an artifact found which had the same text written in multiple languages, which allowed historians and, and archaeologists to figure out the connections between those languages, to figure out and understand those languages because they knew that the text in each of these blocks was saying the same thing. And so we'd like to be able to do that, not just for three languages, but for all the languages and for all the websites, all the identifiers. That's the idea here. Once that's done, uh, in a similar way to Natasha's um, explanation of the PID graph, uh, we also have a, an extensive graph of all of these things. So let me put, um, oh, sorry, I won't reveal that yet. Uh, here's, here's a graph of some things that might be connected. A movie might have a publication date. So on the item about the movie, we may put a property which says, what date was it published? Similarly, we may have another pro uh, property which says, well, which actors were in this movie? So we can link to any actors in that movie because of course those actors then have their own QID, they have their own identifier for that person. Sorry, my dog's in the background. The, the actor then may um, have a connection to their gender or their date of birth or any other personal properties that uh, we know about that actor and we're looking for publicly available information of course so that is supported by references. Uh, but once we have this connected graph then you can see that we can do some subtractions, right? We can figure out how old the actor was when that movie was published. And perhaps we can split that by gender. So if I run this query here, I can ask, what was the actor age at film publication split by gender? And you notice immediately there's a bias here. So for female actors, for male actors, we have a substantially different peak age of film publication, suggesting that Hollywood is, in fact, well, I, I, maybe I shouldn't say it too badly, but um, but certainly there's a bias here. There's an eight, there's a peak age difference um, for those two, and we can do similar for using a very similar graph for a totally different field of study. So, for example, now if we take scientific articles and their authors, so here are the publications, here are the authors. Again, they can connect to those same properties. We can rerun the query. These two, if don't, don't all click on them at once. It takes about 50 seconds to run each of these queries. Uh, so if, you, if you'd like to run one yourself, please do click them, but uh, not all at once, if I can put it that way. You might overload the server. Uh, if, if we run that second query for scientific articles, now you see a different kind of bias. Now you can see that um, male and female peaks occur, occur around the same time, but perhaps we have the, the normal gender barriers that we we know about in um, scientific publication, but also scientific life. So I think it's a useful way. This is not necessarily a comprehensive 
answer to these questions, but it's a useful way of getting quick information and querying um, very complex questions, which previously would have taken a lot of uh, labor. It would have taken a lot of work to go through every single one of those publications and figure out how old the author was at the time of that publication, uh, whereas we can do it in a 45-second Sparkle query. Uh, this is a colleague of mine who died recently, so I, I put his um, face up there because he was right out at the end of that distribution. Uh, now, that's so that's Wikidata. It's quite uh, powerful at um, asking powerful questions, but it turns out that most of Wikidata is not connections between concepts. This uh, is a, the result of a query of what kinds of properties do we have in Wikidata, and the vast majority are external identifiers. They're not links to other wiki items. Uh, they're all just about external identifiers. So this is your turf. It turns out we are listing thousands and thousands of your identifiers for each of these concepts. What can we do with them? Well, if, if I'm in chemistry and I know about a particular molecule, I, I know about its kind of uh, true identity, if I were, but I want to find out its data in all these different databases. Chemists uh, are known for making lots of databases about lots of their properties, so their crystal structure or their electron arrangement, thermal properties, biological activity. These are all typically in different databases. Uh, but if, if that molecule has an ID in each of those databases, and we can collect all of those identifiers on the same Wikidata page, then obviously we've got a way of bouncing off to all of those databases and finding all of that information immediately. So let's try and do that from a browser extension. Actually, I won't tell, uh, tell you much about this slide, sorry. This is just um, a, a survey of a bunch of chemical databases and how the Wikidata coverage is going in those databases. So you, you'll see that the coverage is very sparse in some fields. And it, but it, the good thing is it's, it's biased toward those that are more important. So the, the um, chemicals that are involved in drugs tend to be well covered in Wikidata, but the, all of the chemicals everywhere are not very well covered. So it, it's biased in a good way, if I can put it that way, I guess. Um, now, here's, so I said we were going to try and use these identifiers to, to help our navigation. And here's what a Wikidata page looks like for a property, for uh, like an identifier type. Um, so perhaps, um, let me see, this, is, this, this page is about um, YouTube channel identifier. Okay, so every YouTube channel might have an identifier, and it, it may it would you usually find it at the end of a URL string like this. So youtube.com slash channels slash, and then you have some number at the end or some string which is their form of identification. It's not necessarily a persistent identifier, um, but I'm I'm dealing with all identifiers here, um, so certainly including persistent identifiers, and we we much prefer them to be persistent too because otherwise we have to keep changing the answer um, every time it gets updated. Uh, you can see that there's some other kind of formats that use the same identifier. So there's a third party site um, that happens to use the same identifier and therefore has content about that same object, that same YouTube channel, if I can put it that way. Finally, there's some regular expression that tells us what the format of this $1 is. In all of these cases, there was a $1. This is the format of it. It has to start with UC and then have some numbers and so on and so on. Uh, that just helps to check whether the, these things are real identifiers or not when they get put into the database. So this actually turns out to be all we need for figuring out what concept we are on when we're at a particular website. So here's how we do it. If we're at a website here, inaturalist.org slash taxa slash some number, then ornithorynchus anitanius, um, this, is, this is the platypus. Uh, this page, if you go there, you'll see all the information about the platypus and you'll see all the people's pictures and, and where they found their pictures and some great information. All we need is this. 
because inside that URL is the identifier. And if Wikidata already knows that this number here is associated with the platypus, then we're on track to figuring out what other information we can send you to. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, let me explain what's going on here. Uh, this is a kind of simulation of what's happening in our browser. This little um, thing, if I go back one, um, this little symbol here is the icon for um, entity explosion, and you can see it up there. It's, it hasn't lit up yet. Um, we, but on this, this simulation, it has lit up red. When it's lit up red, it means that the, the string appears to be one that matches up with one of the properties in Wikidata. And the identifier in that string, if you, so if you click the red uh, link, it will turn green if, in fact, 43236 is matched to something in the Wikidata universe. And in this case, it has worked. So we call that entity the platypus, Q15343. And we have a lot of information about the platypus. This actually goes off the screen, but you can see that we have some photographs in Wikimedia Commons. We have a whole article in Wikipedia, of course. There's a wiki species item. And, and then now we get to some more external stuff. So if I, oh, sorry, no, I'll have to show you that later. But there's more and more information down here, like the litter size of a platypus and the observed lifespan. And in fact, there's more down there linking off to all the other biological sites. Uh, here's another example. So if you go to Spotify, again, you can see that the, the URL is in the format that works for one of these. And so if we click it, we change language to Chinese now, and we get all of the same information about uh, our Australian uh, musician, Jimmy Barnes. But now it's all in Chinese because, of course, Wikidata also prides itself on being able to translate these concepts to other languages. OK, so now we're going to try it for something else. Uh, uh, I think Siobhan has a um, poll to ask you what you'd like us to try it on. We could try it on people or places or publications or art or movies or organizations. So yes, if you can uh, all go and answer that poll, uh, you can see it at the bottom center of your screen, I think. Um, and so you can vote for any kind of item. Thank you, Siobhan. Um, I'm, I'm going to hold off for a, a moment just to let you guide me along the way and we'll figure out what we want to query. We could query people, we could query publications. They're the two front runners so far. Organizations, two for, two for that. There's a new front runner, three, four. Okay. Uh, the platypus is certainly getting a lot of linking attention today. I, I knew it, Nicole, it's a great Australian example. So yes, and I know you've been working hard on that. Okay, looks like we're doing organizations. Thank you for filling in your poll. I'm gonna close that for me now. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we get around to people as well. Um, so I've got uh, some organized, now I just have to slightly shift gear to change my, um, so say we were at this organization page, um, so, and we've just come across the organization because we're searching for a job and we're on LinkedIn and we see that it's called Orchid, but we don't really know what that is. And they're looking for employees. Somebody from my school was hired here. How about that? Um, okay. We'd, we'd love to now use this browser extension to find out more about Orchid. What is this thing, Orchid? Now, I just, sorry, have to switch my um, video because when I click this, if I click it, I can see a pop-up, but you can't because it's considered to be a whole different window. So I need to just close my share and switch to a... I tested this before, it should work. Okay, so this in my... Now let's... Okay, so I think you can see most of the screen, but actually I'm going to bring it in a little bit on both sides. Okay. Okay, that's probably far enough. So you can see there, um, we're, we're at the ORCID page. We've got this entity explosion thing. We've clicked it. What's happened during that click is it's done a query of Wikidata to see if this string ORCID appears in any um, identifier, in any Wikidata items. And indeed it does. It occurs in this item here. There was only one item there to select. Uh, and so we get information about it. We can find the chief executive officer. So if we're going for an interview, we've got a chance of being able to know some 
quick information about them, uh, how many members there are, and, and a bunch of other information about that same organization. So here you can see we could link off to their GitHub username. We could go off and see any of these. We could go read their Twitter and so on, which may well be linked on their own page, but this is a fairly comprehensive and good go at things that we might want to know about that organization. And so these links down here will take us off to those sites. So I know you guys talk a lot about the raw IDs. We can go off to the raw ID for ORCID itself. And if we were there, we could have done the same thing from there. So we, we could have gone up to this same link, chosen that, found the same information about ORCID from the raw page. You can do it from any page on which we have that identifier in there. Uh, so that's a kind of useful example. Let me um, let me go to, OK, so here's a person. I, I, this person, I don't know Robin Dessler, but she was mentioned or he was mentioned in a previous uh, talk. So I brought the name up and tried it out. So now we're at the ORCID site. And again, there's an identifier in that URL. So we can click. And hopefully this works. Yes, all right, we found Robin. And we don't have much information about Robin uh, recorded in Wikidata. But we do have some links that could prove useful. So this, for example, is um, a particular tool that uses ORCID identifiers to show more about uh, people. And so I'm going to click that just to see what we get. I've not tested this. Um, this tool, Scolia, is, um, has been heavily developed by people within the Wikidata community. Um, and so it, it, uh, if, if the author here had many publications in Wikidata, it would tell us about them, and it would link us to all the co-authors you see there, all the locations of the people. So there's not a heap of information on, on this, um, these particular publications. But the idea, you can see, already gives you a lot of information just starting from one of the pages about that person. Uh, so I might unshare this and go back to the slides for a sec. How do I do that? Let me do this. And Sorry about the fuss. The fuss was basically because it was considered not to be the same window once I brought up my extension. OK, so uh, so we've tried it for some people and some organizations. You're welcome to go to the slides. Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll hover off there. But um, you can go to your own copy of the slides and uh, click on any of these links. They'll take you to examples where you can test it out. Um, but yeah, just download the extension, then you'll be able to try it out anywhere. Uh, so it also works on lots of other you know, types of sites. So it works from identifiers, but also from social media. So if you, if you see a Twitter comment that you don't really understand what expertise that person has, then you might want to click on them to find out who they are. Uh, the basics of the, the package, um, it's free. It's my contribution to what I said was this big ecosystem. I'm, I'm really relying on the work of many others. Uh, so, so it's certainly open to you. It's open source. You're welcome to help. It, I didn't show you this properly, but, um, but you can just change your language quite easily, and then the whole thing should work in your language. Um, your privacy is protected because it only shares the only web browsing history that is sent from your browser is when you click that link, the URL is sent once to the Wikidata query service, which sends back the result of like which um, what you want to see in that pop-up. But that's the only information along with your language. I think you have to send your language to know which answers you want. Um, and the data is live. So as if, it, if it's not working, then we can easily add more and more to this um, site. We can add the identifier in if it's not associated with Wikidata. So I think there's a bit of a virtuous circle that is, this will work better when Wikidata is better. And when Wikidata is better, uh, it, and Wikidata will work better when this works better. So it, it's all, it's all, I think, helping. Um, if if you'd, we'd love you to join us on the team building Wikidata to make it work. If you want to contribute your PIDs to those the related items on Wikidata, we'd love to help you with that and figure out how to do it. Uh, here's some nitty gritty on how it's programmed. If you 
uh, computational and want to help out, that's the kind of thing that it does. But uh, don't worry. For those of you who just want to use it, go ahead, enter the explosion, download it, and it'll disappear up in your um, browser extensions. And it, it um, should hopefully light up lots of the time when you're browsing just for fun. Click it occasionally and see what you can find out about people. All right, I might um, just skip on to the, um, I mean, so this is a, a bit of a map for how to get your identifiers up. So if you are interested in doing that, um, you, you can browse through these slides a little bit more. But uh, I will go back and finish with one final question, unless you've, you've got questions here. Yes, so Seb I'll answer some of your questions. Sebastian says, it just matches against the URL. Yes, uh, it currently only uses the URL. So only sends the URL and only uses it to figure out whether that's a match. It's, it's testing the format of the URL and the format of the identifier in the URL. And if they all match up against a particular concept, then, then it uh, brings it up. Later, I think we might need, so for example, it gets defeated by things like DOIs, which redirect to a um, publisher's website. Um, what we're going to need to do is interrogate those publishers' HTML a little bit to find out in their metadata what their DOI is. I think we're going to try. And, I'm going to try and do that, but I haven't got it yet. Um, so here's. Uh, if you've got other questions, feel free to uh, post them up and I'll try and answer them. But in the meantime, I'll ask you a question, which we can answer from Wikidata. I know this um, crowd tends to have a dispro disproportionate number of library associated people. So I'm going to give you my favorite library question. Who is the most famous child of a librarian? Feel free to post your answers in the chat. But at the, at the end, I will click this link and find out what Wikidata says is the most famous child of a librarian. This is the kind of question that Google or even Wikipedia can't really help you with. It's not a, um, it's, you sort of in, need to interrogate an entire network of every possible person and every possible child. So it's not something that a search can, can do. Um, you feel personally attacked. By the, the most famous, are you, a, uh, are you the child of a librarian? Are you? Well, the the aim is not to attack any children of librarians, but in fact to show how amazing librarians are. You'll see in a minute. Is that from Siobhan? Is it? I don't know who Peter Palooza is. So many of you. Yes, Nicole has has knows that I use this. Um, same question, <laughs> more than what? So I recycle my material, I'm afraid. Any, any more questions uh, before I, well, no, I, I think you guys should have a go at answering. Why don't, you, why don't you tell us some answers? Who do you think is the most famous child of a librarian? The, the other great thing about this question is librarians pride themselves on being able to get answers to questions. And uh, I claim this is kind of hard answer to find. So, um, so that's, that's why I like posting it out there. Anyone want to have a go? Nicole, you're not allowed to answer, of course, but um, anyone else? Do you know any famous? <laughs> John. All kinds of ways of cheating nowadays, aren't there? Yes, I, I've i just run some uh, chemistry units all semester trying to prevent students to from, um, from texting each other the answers. So yes, we Got some new challenges in this modern era. All right, well, I, I can't see anyone answering, so let's let's click it. Uh, I think I'll go here, and this is running the query live. So if there's a new child, newly famous, we'll find out. What I've done here is found all parents that have a property, uh, sorry, parents that have a, an occupation equals librarian. Uh, and over here, we've said, well, find out who their child is but also find out how many, Wiki, how many languages of Wikipedia items have been written about that child. And the answer is that Superman has 100, Wikipedia, 100 in 100 languages of Wikipedia, Superman has been written about. And Superman is indeed the child of a librarian in some models of that universe. So no, not Jesus or Muhammad. They would score higher on the popularity, but they were not children of librarians unless you count. I don't know, God does not have property 
occupation equals librarian at the moment. But if that happens later, then maybe you will, maybe, maybe your answer, the answer will change. But anyway, you can also see some other cool, cool people who are also children of librarians. And the message, of course, is librarians are superheroes. So this is absolutely not intending to attack you. Uh, ah, Nicole's giving hints. Yes, yes, indeed. A fantastic hint. Cryptic, indeed. Uh, thanks, everyone. If you've got further questions, I, I can answer in the chat. I'll pass it back to you, Javon. That was great. Thanks so much, Toby. That was excellent. Uh, and it is nice to think of librarians as superheroes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I will invite up our next speaker.